This is what it looks like after I press record. Hey guys, Omar here, and today I'm just gonna talk about the lenses that I've purchased for my Nikon system. For those of you new here, I'm kinda new to Nikon. About eight months ago or so, I picked up the Nikon Z6 II after reviewing it. Uh, I just loved it. After reviewing it, I was like, the images are like, oh. I knew I had to have my own, whether it be for professional work or my own work. The camera felt great in my hands. The image quality was wonderful. The screen was beautiful. The EVF was beautiful. Battery life, eh. <laughs> Something I could live with. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is talk about my favorite focal length, which is the 50 millimeter focal length. And I'm starting with that focal length because the first Nikon lens I owned is the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8. Plastic, El Cheapo. This lens kind of reminded me of Canon's Nifty 50. And look at this thing. This thing's plastic, it's small, it's lightweight. But the pictures that came from this lens, I was like, what? So I love this lens, 50 millimeter 1.8, have not get, gotten rid of that. And one of the reasons I haven't gotten rid of that is because it's super lightweight. So I actually don't mind walking around, if I'm gonna walk around with a 50 millimeter, I don't mind walking around with this little Z6 II setup here. So then I purchased the 50 millimeter 1.8 S lens. I don't know why they don't call them Z lenses, but okay, the 50 millimeter 1.8. This is a lot heavier, well-built, but the reputation that this 50 millimeter lens has is incredible. Every review you see, people compare it to Zeiss lenses, that the sharpness is crazy incredible. I made a video comparing this little cheapy plastic one to this one. The funny thing I found was you really have to pixel peep to see the difference. You know, if you shot all your work with this little plasticky thingamabub and told everyone it was this one, no one's gonna find you out, yo, if you wanna lie to people. I got this used and that's one of the great things about jumping into the Nikon Z system with an adapter is everyone is selling their old Nikon lenses because of their switching to mirrorless. So this one right here is a gem. This is one of my favorite, favorite lenses for everything. I can't believe I, I used to travel with this lens like when we'd go to Europe and stuff. I would just walk around with this super beefy, heavy 50 millimeter on my Canon. I just love those pictures. So I, I was just looking for the Sigma, the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 art lens. And I love this lens for environmental portraits. It's not as wide as a 35 and it doesn't zoom in like an 85. It's just perfect for me. I just love, some people think 50 millimeter is boring. I love the challenge of creating cool portraits with the 50 millimeter. Now, why get the 1.4 instead of the 1.8? I've used this lens so much. It has kind of become a signature of mine, a full length portrait at 1.4. I just love that. So this is my go-to uh, aperture 1.4 if I'm doing a single person 50 millimeter portrait. Those are my 350s. And the reason they're still hanging around is because I love all three. If I can only pick one, I can't. <laughs> no, if I can only pick one, it would have to be the 50 millimeter 1.4 from Sigma, the art lens, because sharpness is not the only thing. There's also like a feel, a gut reaction to some photographs. Okay, so those are the 50 millimeters. When I purchased my own version of the Nikon Z6 II, I didn't purchase the kit. I only purchased the body alone. 
because I was like, I don't want that lens. That's the kit lens. I'm a kit lens snob. <laughs> Instead, I ordered the 24 to 70 2.8 S lens. And this one has a little window on the top. This one is a 2.8, which is better. <laughs> This one is great for event photography, which is what I do. But what I realized, again, I'm at a crossroads. I think I'm going down a path, but the more you use these lenses, the more you start to, start to figure out there really isn't such a big difference with most any brand. Oh, you can take great pictures with almost any lens and everything now. So what I've discovered was this guy's heavier, tougher to walk around with. You kind of want to leave it behind. And I actually purchased the 24 to 70 used. I just went and got this one for a couple of hundred bucks because it's, I like walking around with the 24 to 70, if uh, the F4 version, if I'm gonna do video or if I'm just gonna do some fun street photography. This is just so balanced. Let me show you. I still can't get used to the direction of how Nikon, the caps turn. I'm always tightening them. <laughs> So look how perfect this this is such a perfect like travel uh you know travel kit right here it's just so well balanced it's the right size nice and small As soon as you put this beast on it really is top heavy, very top heavy. There it is right there. Now, don't get me wrong. This guy takes incredible pictures and um, it kind of is my go-to when I'm doing event work. I love to zoom in to 70 at 2.8. Let's get a little bit of bokeh, keep my ISOs down. <laughs> So yes, the lens is incredible, but I feel like I'd rather have this to be versatile, the, the 24 to 70 to be versatile, and then carry along a kit, like a kit lens, carry along a prime lens in order to get bokeh or a little bit more low light photography. But it's so top heavy that this was giving me a callus on my hand. I actually had to buy a grip for the camera because the weight of the camera was pushing my skin. Isn't that weird? I don't even know how to hold a camera. <laughs> okay, so that was one of the first purchases I made was this 24 to 70, and then I realized it's so big, I don't wanna walk around the street with it. So I went and got the F4 version. I highly recommend the F4 version, just as an all-arounder. And you can get great bokeh with this 24 to 70 F4 version. Again, if you really want bokeh, 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 I would get a prime lens and then it, it, let's just say that Nikon came out with a 28 to 75 2.8. I think for me, that makes more sense than this heavy guy. I think if you're working in a studio and you want this 24 to 70 2.8, like it's on a tripod, you're not walking around too much, then uh, yeah. But I might sell this 24 to 70 2.8, I think it's one, maybe one of my regret pur purchases. Okay, next up, whoa, this plant just attacked me. Next up, I love this lens, man. Uh, this is the uh, 14 to 30 F4. This is the widest lens I've had for a full frame system. I've never had 14 millimeters before. And I find that it's so wide. It's great that it's so wide when you want to take that wide picture, the widest, widey, wide, 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 wide shot. And what I find is, um, and by the way, the reason I purchased this is when I shoot reception party dance photos, my favorite way to do it is to kind of be in the crowd. But if people are dancing very close to you, you only can shoot at 16. When I had Canon, I used to use the 17 to 40. That was my favorite length lens um, and also the 16 to 35 f4 version those were my favorite lenses to shoot with the funny thing with this nikon version is if 14 is just way too wide i find that sometimes when i 
pull back and shoot at 14, I have to crop in and it's just way too wide. So 14 to 16 is great for decor and room shots. And then I try to keep it around 17, 18 to shoot party dance photos. Um, the one thing I had to learn how to deal with with these Nikon lenses was the whole um, locking lenses. So this is a locking lens. You see there's a little dot there. When you put it on your camera, the camera says, hey, we can't take any pictures until you do this. And now the lens is ready to go. At first I hated that and in my video I said, I'm never gonna buy one of those. But um, it turns out that it's so great, of course, to pack you know, a tiny little lens like this in a bag and have it even if you're not gonna use it, than to have one that is just bigger because you don't like the unlocking thing. So I dealt, I dealt with it. <laughs>purchase was again it's very dangerous to you know search the keh website for used stuff to see what people are selling this was also very cheap i picked up a 28 millimeter 1.4 now the read this thing is so heavy and this is one of those dilemmas where do i take this lens out because it is super super heavy beautiful tank well built but the images are so beautiful, that's the trade-off, right? Because Nikon makes a little plasticky 28 millimeter 2.8 that you can walk around with, sure. But what I loved about this lens is it gives you a great character for when you're shooting like the party dance floor. You can really pinpoint one person a little bit better than if you're shooting at f4, let's just say. So I love the separation, I love wide and separation. And the lens that was doing that for me before was my 20 millimeter 1.8 for Sony. I used to whip that out at the end of the party. That sounds wrong. <laughs> I used to use that lens towards the end of the party uh, when I kind of just wanted some different looks. After I had everything I wanted, I'd put the, two point, uh, the 20 millimeter 1.8 on and just those were always my favorite sort of look. So this is one of those like specialty lenses that comes out every now and then when I want that look, a wide look with a bocaliciousness. Now I went out of order because the, dang it, totally went out of order. There's a dilemma I've had for the longest time with the Z series and it's as an event photographer, I should have the 70 to 200, which I've actually used and it's one of the best lenses I ever use, the 70 to 200 2.8 S lens, loved it. I shot portraits with it, loved it. My only issue is I don't love long lenses to put in a carrying bag and a bag, and the 70 to 200 is pretty long. Um, so I kind of was juggling what can I do if I need a 70 to 200? What's an alternative that gives me a little bit of reach? This 105 1.4 is my favorite lens of all these lenses that are on the table. This one takes the cake. Um, as a portrait photographer, it's super great to get compression, full length portraits. When you shoot events in low light, the 105 1.4 comes in handy. And something about the lens, it has a beautiful character to it. It's also nice to pack away. Look how stubby it is. So it's kind of like a super fat 85. And so if you put the lens hood down like this, it packs away pretty nice. So this kind of, this was like a no brainer. I didn't want an 85 and I didn't want really want to carry around a 70 to 200 on portrait sessions. 105, 1.4, I love that lens so much. of you wondering about adapting lenses these the the ftz adapter 
has worked, let's say 90% fantastically. If I was shooting once in a lifetime events, I would probably put a native lens on because there have been a couple of times where the 105 sort of doesn't want to focus on something near or close and I have to like manually focus it and then hit autofocus and I'll be like, oh, you wanna focus over there. Now that's not that common, but it has happened with the FTZ adapter. Now, back to the 70 to 200 dilemma. Uh, one other dilemma I had was, if you noticed in my last video when I was shooting cityscapes, that I needed something with a little bit more reach. The 100 millimeter is fine. Shooting the Z7 and cropping in or using DX mode gets me a little closer, but I know I wanted a wildlife lens. Oh, -ho 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 and something that in case I needed to shoot a ceremony or something from very far, what would I use? And my solution after researching the perfect lens for me, oh my God, look how small this thing is. Look how tiny this is. Can you guess what this tiny, what? Can you guess the focal length of this tiny little lens, right? Maybe a 150, maybe a 200, you'd be wrong. <laughs> this is, the Nikon 300 millimeter PF. And uh, PF stands for perfectly fine for me. <laughs> Look how small this thing is. And this is a 300 millimeter F4. Now, I just, this just arrived yesterday. So I also purchased with it a, what is this? A teleconverter, a 1.4 teleconverter. So that means if I shoot the Z7 with the 300 millimeters and use DX mode, that gives me a 24 megapixel image uh, that's about 420 millimeters. Cool for wildlife. And if I use the teleconverter with the 300 millimeters, that's 420 millimeters plus the Z7 plus the DX, it's like, you know, 1,000 millimeters or something. <laughs> yeah, so that's my Nikon update. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys next time.